YouTubers, Brian Proctor back again, and this will be part five of creating your own comic books from start to finish. Actually, this will be part five, part two from part four. So for those newcomers, if you just clicked onto the thumbnail for whatever reasons, and you're here, this is a uh, part five of a series that I'm doing about creating your own comic book. For those people that woke up one day and say, hey, I want to do my own comic book, or you saw some Marvel movies, or for whatever reason you wanted to do your own comic book and didn't have any idea or clue how to do it, this series that I'm doing is teaching you from start to finish, and you are on part five, and we are doing thumbnail slash layouts. And I said I'm going to keep my videos down to 30 minutes. So I am going to try, but I'm going to, I want to show you guys something, give you a little advice after this. And uh, I always try to give advice because I think that knowledge is more important than skill. So let's set a timer for 30 minutes. Alexa, set an alarm for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, starting now. Yeah, because that's how I roll. Okay, so... Last week we did, last week, last video we did thumbnails for the first three pages. And if you are lost, go back to video four or part four and see what we, what I did. Okay, so continue with thumbnails and layouts. And this is something that you're going to have to do whenever you do comics. Let me get my handy tools ready. So we left off on page three and 19. So what you always do. Well, what I do is I draw my 11 by 17 size panel and then I choose now each one of these has six panels yeah I was lost for a second there so you want to find out which it was the most important and right off the bat it would be this one so to do a layout I want to have this to be the biggest uh, panel so these two can pretty much be the same and I looked at this while uh, before I started to film let me check the camera and make sure you guys can see before I start getting into this and uh, this, this some of these these two can be chopped up a little bit but we're gonna we're gonna focus on this one and um, I think I'm gonna go all the way across the page with this <clears throat> and this is all subject to change this is basically a rough layout of how the original or the the not original the final page is going to be so we've got the guy with his powers and um i really really looking at this i have his his whole body i really don't need his feet this is the part that i need to really focus on so in order to make that a little larger let's do that let's just go from here And I can slide that over, but I want some words here. And this is all you need to do for now for your roughs. So we have these three. And this one, and I actually changed the dialogue because 22, I'll show you guys what I had. 22 was a close up of the boy holding dog's face. Do you know what this means? I'm a superhero. So I decided to change that. So with this one, I don't need all this down here. Let me get my pen because I have been inking it for you guys in the last video. So I want this. And his power, whatever his power is going to be. And I think we decided to do uh, lightning. I decided to do lightning. So as I was saying with this, <coughs> we'll cut this down. So that's one, two. So I can put the two up here somewhere. We've got this one, the full one for 21. So that means we got three more panels. This one is, I can chop it up to be right here. So I can take out this. And let me do this in blue. So basically, this is what all that I need for this. The same one with this. I'll keep his collar so you can read his name. And this one will probably be a full shot. And I think on this one, I, I decided to leave the dog out. But I haven't decided yet. <clears throat> so we have these three. So let's say one. 
And this one would be, would be kind of, to me, more important. So this is going to be a big one. So I can actually put, since he's doing, he's doing this, he's leaning down. And I said I'm going to cut it here, holding the dog's face. cut it right there so that I have room here because he doesn't say much so the word balloon can go here so I want to chop this like that and put the dog here so it'll read one two three four five six and this one I can put the boy here and because I have a little space here that the dog doesn't say anything I will put the boy here and put the dog under the space And the dog can be right here. However a dog is. Draw a dog, Brian. Draw the dog. Like that. So that takes here those three. So this is the boy. Do it in black. Just to stay with the theme of today's. And this one is in the dog's face. And that's a dog. And then this one, 21, 21, where's my script? <clears throat> 21, a full panel of boy doing, and he's just showing his power. 22, close up, uh, boy holding dog's face. Do you know what this means? And I kept that that dialogue. Do you know what this means, boy? And then on 23, I changed it because medium shot of dog, uh, 23, 23, yeah, 23. Now all you need is a costume. No, okay, go back to 22. Close up a boy holding dog's face. Do you know what this means, comma? I'm a superhero. And then 23 is the dog. So he's saying, you know what this means? I'm a superhero. And the dog saying, now all you need is a costume. So I switched that to... Um, what did I say? You know what this means, boy, and then period. And the dog means no more electric bills because he shot his electric electricity, showing him he had the electric power. And then on 24, I changed it, which I had boy in foreground, dog in background, boy, you're right. He was saying, you're right. I can be a superhero. But he's, I changed that to, I'm a superhero in 24. So in this one, he's saying that. Do you know what this means, boy? And the dog is here saying, <clears throat> excuse me, because I, my sinuses is, is, is really shot right now. I even having trouble breathing because I have asthma and I am allergic to cats, which I have now. And you say, why would you have a cat if you have asthma? It's because it's actually a kitten. And uh, it was up in uh, my wife's motor of her car because it ran up in there to get warm one winter night. And she tried to drive the car and heard the cat meowing of the kitten. And then um, I ended up pulling it out. So it was, such, it was still a baby cat, baby kitten. So I kept it because we, you know, the mom was gone and shelters were too full to take it. So I have it and I'm dying. So such as life okay so now this is what the dog says no more electric bills which didn't need to be that big of a panel and then the boy's like no I, i'm a superhero so first two panels is the boy is getting out of bed and i want to keep that one because i'll move the bed over some more bring the dog up here and then you have the boy <clears throat> Kind of stepping out of the bed. And usually the, in, when I write, the first thing I see is what I draw. And then I'll look at it for a while. And then I'll change it later if, if, if I don't like it. But I'll, the first, first image in my mind is what I'll draw and I'll stay with that one. So... And as I said, it doesn't have to be 
perfect because this is basically just your page layout. And that's just where your image would go. Now, if you like the way I crop these off, if you were not the writer, then you wouldn't be able to do that. You'd have to go by exactly what the writer said. If he said a far shot, you couldn't turn, or medium shots, you couldn't turn a medium shot into a close up and say, oh, I thought it would be better. You'd be out of a job. You have to, you have to do what they say, which is one reason I enjoy doing my own thing. And finally he jumps out of bed and I'm looking at this and I'm saying, do I need the dog in this shot? I could actually cut him like that because he just feels rejuvenated because in panel 20 he says yeah, I have medium shot of boy steps out of bed I feel like I can which takes you over to 21 and he used his power so it does make sense to have the dog because he's speaking to the dog and the dog is kind of like okay let's see what can you do so just for the sake of argument I don't see that in that I should do an upshot of the boy. But that might be too dramatic. So for now, I will stick to what I have. And then maybe if I do the final, when I do the final, I may change it. Usually, if you have a problem, if you see it and you 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 want to change it but you can't see it in your head, stay with it. Don't don't um, don't mess yourself up trying to think about it and then not be able to do it and get frustrated. Just stay with what you have. And the dog. He's standing up and he's looking at the boy because I can change this now that I'm looking to the dog's point of view where the dog is here and he's looking at the boy about to do what he said he's going to do, which I kind of like that. It's more, more, um, focused the dog's focus and your focus on the boy I'll, i might change that later <clears throat> we'll see in the final draft the final cut who survives okay two more to go and I, I said i'm gonna do this in 30 minutes which yeah good luck on that one okay so in this panel <clears throat> we have the boy designing his costume talking to the dog <clears throat> about what it looks like the boy makes the uh, costume, the dog looks at it, I guess he says, I like it. So <clears throat> right off the bat, they can say 29 is going to be a very small, thin panel because that's just his eyes. So this could be a medium shot. This fairly big because you focus. So I'm saying these two or these three might be the biggest panels so let's just do this let's do the one two i want to do that maybe long this one could be really narrow where one two three four one two so let's put two here three the small dog here Now that, this, because I want to put this all the way across like that. And I can put the crowd, I can put a bigger crowd down here. So if I do that, I can still, it just won't be as long. I'll bring it out. And the dog I want small, so I can bring it out more. Because it's just a dog's face. So let's say it would be like that. All right, let's do this. The boy's at the drawing table. The drawing is costume. 
And as I say, when you thumbnail, you just need enough to, sh to show, to remember for yourself what you're doing. And usually if I'm, if I wasn't on camera, this would be even rougher. This would be definitely rougher. Wouldn't, it would definitely be rougher than this. So, and you have to remember to leave space for your word balloons. And I remember 26, he was saying, do you want me to desi uh, design a costume for you, boy? And the dog was like, no, thanks. I'm good. And drawing table and the dog. And I'd have to shift that over to, let's do this. dog and I am really terrible at animal drawing I can draw them if I continue to study them but just out of the blue if you ask me to draw a dog or something or a giraffe or whatever can't do it cannot do it put the pencil in his hand drawing table Dog. Just two panels. So, word balloon would go here. Word balloon would go here. And I think the dog says something. Let's zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see better. And. The hand and the dog. So remember, this dog is by himself in this one. So a close up of the dog. Uh, the boy, I'm running out of time. I paused it for one second. So my alarm is going to go off in probably about 10 minutes. I can't find my white eraser, the one I told you guys to buy. So this is just going to be his hand. You won't see the full uniform. And this is the dog sitting here. We have a uh, little background for the dog. Dog is saying something like sweet. Because that is page 27. 27 close up. A boy hands only in foreground. Dog in background looking up. Yeah, dog says sweet. Sweet costume master. Okay, so this one is the eyes. Let's ink this. The best that I can. And you have the dog again. And I grew up with dogs and cats, so I should know at least the foundation of a dog and a cat. But, you know, I didn't, when I was young, I didn't think I was going to turn out to be a comic book artist. And I may change his, his costume because I was looking at this earlier and I said, you know, change his costume. Okay, so you have the eyes behind the mask. And wait, you have to put a mask over that, Brian.
And then he say something in this panel. This is panel 29, 29. Extreme close-up, boys, eyes only, name. So I guess he named himself in this particular uh, panel. And the last panel on this page is crowds, the crowd. So we have one more page to go. And uh, as I say, I'm trying to keep this up about 30 minutes or so. And this is the crowd looking up. I'm just going to draw some figures. I'm not going to go crazy because they're on the street looking up. So, yeah. Actually, I can just draw some. The, and I call this clothespin. If you were young and your mom had a, a clothesline, it, the, the clothespins look like a little bit like that. And it's just an easy way and you just throw a couple arms on there and you have a crowd. And they're looking up on the street level at the guy. So let's see if I can put the last panel on this page here. Last panel, last page on this page and good there's only four panels so I like the way this is set up to be honest yeah you guys can see I was checking it out because it fits so I'm gonna stay with that one so we have the big panel here of the guy the hero the medium here and the L shaped here and that's because this guy is going to be in the air so we're going to put him up here we're going to put him down a little lower looking up so we're going to have his shoulders and his chin and he's looking up so basically he turned his head to look up at this guy who's higher than him give him a heroic pose that's not really heroic but or evilish because he's showing his powers as well and what I had was whenever he charges up you see lightning kind of come from his eyes a little bit a kind of a, a um, a, I can't think of the word right now. A, a very light, dim kind of lightning trail from whichever, from whatever way he moves his eyes, and then buildings in the background. And this one is an upshot. He's on the corner of the building. With an upshot. Looking down at everybody. Corner of the building. And this one is his face. And I'll shift his face over a little bit more. No, I want his whole face. Forget his whole face. Close up of his mask and his face and the expression that he's happy. And this guy's in the background. So there is my layout for the panel so the next thing is actually doing the not the roughs the finished product so let me finish this and there are a few things I want to go over and I'm surprised my alarm didn't go off Alexa didn't go off yet and um, that's it so this panel is like this that and like that so now I have the finished um, layouts so I think this was page one two three four and four five and six so you know you, you, you can number them if you want six five four three two one but I think you'll understand it when you have it so that is the way that I look at how to do a layout which is the most important part of the, the story on that page that will 
link all the rest together. And I said with that one, it was this one because the boy's coming into his power. Uh, you don't have to show his feet because he don't have a costume. So I would say maybe here or to the waist up. And um, yeah, that would be the most important page. Once you find that out it, and try to sketch it out first, just draw your 11 by 17 fake box. And then go from that one. You start with the biggest panel first and you work your way around the other ones. And as I say, all of that's subject to change because once I get it on a real 11 by 17, you know, I might have to shrink this a little bit or move it over. But that is the best way to do uh, your layouts. Okay, so the thing I wanted to talk about is usually beginners. When beginners start to draw, one thing I notice they always do is they draw straightforward. They always do straightforward shots. And <clears throat> and it, it's, it's natural because I used to do everything straightforward, straight center, you know, without perspective, anything. But... That's something that you guys are going to have to, 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 to work on. Go back and look at some of your pictures and see, are all your drawings straight on? Um, one thing you can do is draw pers like a perspective. And you don't need these two. And then just your shoulders are going to fall on that line. Your legs are going to fall on that line. Like so. Put your head there, your arm there. So you're doing more of a three-quarter shot. And it looks better than always drawing a um, straight on shot. And you could do the same thing on the other side as well. As long as you stay on the perspective lines, <coughs> you'll be good. And usually if I draw something like that, I'll put a little, just a bit, just a bit of a curve to it and then move his head up because that makes it look like his chest is um, poking out, which for a hero, you would want that. And let me ink this so you guys can see that just a little bit better. So as I say, I would I would usually do a, a curve, just a bit of a curve. And the arm curve around, and the other arm, which you won't see, you won't see too much unless you bring it out here. And then you just curve around, rib cage, um, uh, not pelvis, the torso like that and then you have your basically you're following your lines going down all the way to the feet and that makes it for a better uh better position and it's just something you guys can work on where are my notes okay something else conversation or not just conversation laying out your panels the best thing to do to lay out your panels are start watching um cartoons now let me let me go back a little bit if you're looking at this then i know that you enjoy looking at cartoons animation one of the best advice i have is to say to watch maybe one of your favorite animations and turn the sound all the way off and you can see more better the positionings when the panels or when the um scene changes um the the perspective of it because you're not listening to the music and you're not seeing the or, or hearing the, the special effects, you're basically seeing the actual drawing. So when they switch over to a new panel, let's just say, <coughs> and you gotta forgive me again, somebody's talking in this in this uh, particular frame, shall we say, of the, the, the cartoon. And then next second, they switch it to the other guy talking. Next second, they switch it to um, the two, standing facing off things like that you don't see because we're we're too busy listening to the special effects and the arguments and the, you know the music and the so forth but watch uh and i don't want to say an anime watch a more of an american done not something with so much so much um computer generated like the old super friends for example you want to keep it as as um easy to spot as as possible i think with a netflix a lot of people have netflix and they have a um stretch armstrong i started looking at that that's perfect to start out with turn the sound down and because it's more of americanized and it's more kid kidified I, that's not really a word but whenever they change the scenes it's easier to see and to pick up and then if they're in a group you can see the group shot 
you know, where's the leader standing? Is he turned to the right? Is he turned to the left? And then with um, things like Netflix, you can pause it and go back and so forth. And that's just great advice for people that are having a hard time. If you're a beginner, number one, if you're having a hard time to um, lay your panels. Okay, that's my 30 minutes right there. Alexa, stop alarm. Yeah, like I say, that's how I roll. It's pretty good to have too. Um, another thing, um, <clears throat> like I was saying, conversations. Uh, let's get a new piece of paper. There's always going to be a time where you're going to have a conversation between your characters. Let's put all this together. And granted, the fight scenes you want to be outstanding, shall we say. But even the, the conversations, you want to stand out. You don't want people to just, just talk to people here facing each other, talking, because that's more of a, um, I'm calling you out kind of, kind of thing. And it's kind of boring. It can be done at times, but you want to kind of stay away from it. Because as I say, this is more like, um, comic strip kind of talking because when you're reading comic strip, you want it as easy as possible. You want to try to think about ways to make your conversations a little better. Like, here's a guy here, he's right here. Here's the other guy here. Uh, here's a guy's ear right there. Just little ways to make every panel exciting. Um, a third one, and this is when I say start watching, you know, cartoons. I don't want to say anime anymore, just some cartoons, some type of superhero cartoons because it's going to be dramatic in there somewhere. And then turn the sound off and then just watch it and see, oh, that's how they're, they're talking or that's how they're running. Or when the scene changes, you always have your background. They always show the background when the scene changes and then they'll go to the people and then little things like how much background do they show in 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 every scene another way of conversation is let's just say one guy's here another guy could be way back here he could be walking away and they're still talking or he could just be in the background just different ways to to spice up every panel so it won't be so boring and as i said try not to make everything straight on. I mean, you could, you could lean this, you could lean this over and then have the characters like that. Just any, <clears throat> any way you can to make it a little better. <clears throat> Let me pause this for one second. All right. And then one last thing that I suggested in, a, in an, another video is that if you are a beginner, it's great to have books to draw from, but <clears throat> if you can, Go to like the Dollar General store and buy you some figures because nothing is better than a three-dimensional figure to draw from. Now, it doesn't have to be something so elaborately detailed. And I just pulled these out. These are my sons, which who is now like old. And uh, I just kept his toys because he grew out of them and I didn't want him to break them up. But a good thing to have is something like this and <clears throat> you want something that you can kind of pose a little bit more but let's say out of all of them you don't want something like this you don't want to start out with something like this because it's just too over exaggerated something that doesn't have a lot of clothes on a lot of coats on even his his um muscles are too if you look at all of this this is just like wrong if you study anatomy this is wrong and you don't want to start drawing anatomy like this and then go to a company trying to get a job and they look at your anatomy and they're like, what, what is this? What does he have chains under his clothes? So, <clears throat> but some things are good. Like some of the hands, some of the way the hands are, the muscles in the legs, the feet, you have a little bit of range of movement. So you can strike a few poses with it, but you don't want anything with clothes on it <clears throat> with too much gear. And this is like, I don't even think this rifle came with him. It was just in his hand when I dug it out the box. Um, you want to study the anatomy first before you try to put gear on him. That way you know the gear will fit right. And even things like this toy guns, you know, would be great to have to draw. 
you know, for um, reference, reference. So go to Dollar General. This guy, <clears throat> and for the life of me, I can't think of the book. I like that book, but something like this without too many clothes on, and um, you know, you can focus on the, the shoulders, the side, <clears throat> the sides. Uh, it's too much of the back muscles, but basically, go to like I say, go to Dollar General. Find you a couple if you don't have any already, and I'm I'm sure if you like comics and you like anime, you've got some toys laying around, and you could eat, actually say, you know, set them up somehow. Uh, I'm looking at it myself. Set it up <clears throat> somehow where they're talking, and you can take a picture of that with your camera, and then draw that. But get the um, anatomy right first, then you can use that, and you know, especially drawing a crowd. If you have one guy back here, one guy here one guy here and just take pictures of that that's great for reference but I say books are great and you cannot beat a book but a book might not have the exact um, position that you want so it doesn't hurt even a Barbie you know I think I don't know I think my niece or somebody had a Barbie a long time ago and I took it I just started drawing from it you know Barbie is better than some of the girl figures that you get which are kind of you know twisted and posed they're not really feminine shaped too much but yeah that is advice for those who are just starting get some figures continue to draw from the books because you got to know the anatomy right and then just you can use that for perspective and group shots and um, panel layouts so I'm done with the layouts so the next video will be on me drawing the finished pages. And then after that, <coughs> unless I can think of something that comes between it, we'll get into inking and then coloring later. But yeah, we'll see what happens in between that. So I know we probably went over a little bit of 30 minutes. Let's see how long this has been so far. 37 minutes, which is not too bad. So I'll end it with that. And I will see you guys later. And if you are liking it, please subscribe. And if you have any friends that are trying to do the same thing you do, please tell them about my videos. Check it out. I'm trying to get as many subscribers as I can because I want to teach as many people as I can. So with that, on that note, whatever I left out, I'll put it in the next video. All right, that's it. And I will see you guys later.